The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Isaiah 35 verses 4 to 7a where the Lord said to Isaiah, Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the bubbling ground, the thirsty ground, bubbling springs. My dear friends in Christ, the portion of scripture that's before us is one of those beautiful gospel gems that the Lord, the Holy Spirit inspired Isaiah to write to cheer some troubled people. These words first applied to the, well, the first recipients of, G, of Isaiah's writings, of course, and they lived in some extremely troubled times. The small group of believers to whom Isaiah was writing, they had to kind of wonder if God had forgotten about them, if God had abandoned them. They had to wonder about that because so many of those first listeners had abandoned God and were worshiping idols instead. Well, they had to think that way and sometimes we're tempted to think the same way. Has God forgotten about us? Has God abandoned us? Well, think of all of the problems and troubles that we face as we live in this sinful world today, the ongoing virus problem, political tensions, racial tensions, there's wars and rumors of wars we could say all the time, but to the first listeners of Isaiah and to us today as current listeners, Isaiah, God tells Isaiah to say, be strong, do not fear, your God will come, he will come to save you. And of course, Jesus did come. He did save us from the punishment that we deserve because of our sins. Because, well, he paid for our sins in full. And that's why we can be strong and not be afraid. As believing children of God, we know that we're forgiven our sins are gone forever through the blood of Christ, through faith in Christ, and we're going to heaven. We have nothing to fear. We don't have to be afraid of health issues or terrorism or any of the enemies that we may face in this life or any of life's problems or troubles. We have been healed from the sickness of sin because we have a savior. When God accomplishes his spiritual healing in us, this miraculous deliverance from sin in us, what Isaiah wants us to realize, what the Lord wants us to realize through Isaiah is, is that now we can live Christian lives. We can talk about our savior. So. God through Isaiah is saying to us today, be strong, do not fear our God. He empowers us. He empowers us to live as children of God. But now according to Isaiah here, we need to recognize that the lives we live as believing children of God, God doesn't want them to be minimal or mechanical, rather, energetically, joyfully, and wanting to do whatever we can, we'll want to live as God's children. Isaiah wrote here, water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. 
people in Palestine or, or any desert area are really going to appreciate this picture. Without water, the land would be dead and barren. But when water is available, then there can be plant life, plant growth. And imagine what it had to mean for the Israelites when they were out there in the wilderness and they saw God produce water from the rock that, that supplied their, their, for their thirsty needs. Isaiah here is picturing the amazing, the wonderful change that takes place in believers when Christ comes into our hearts through faith, when the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and puts Christ there, huh? As water is a savior for plants and animals, so Christ, so the Messiah is our savior. And his salvation is real. It's not a mirage like sometimes people would see out in the, out in the desert. But again, these examples of water in the desert, they emphasize that amazing change from spiritual death to spiritual life that has been worked in us when we were called to faith through the gospel's power. But now, would we describe our Christian lives as gushers in the wilderness or streams in the desert or or would we maybe describe our lives like little puddles that just sit there you know by faith we know Jesus died for us that our sins are forgiven that we're heirs of eternal life so really we do have every reason to gush forth like streams in the desert Knowing that Christ is our Savior, that we have the forgiveness of sins, that empowers us to live our lives for Christ. But now, what does that mean? What it means, of course, is that as we are traveling through this life, we will see and have to do, deal with, with situations where it almost seems as if everything seems to be going wrong for us in our lives. We'll be faced with life's trials and troubles. But again, doesn't knowing what Christ has done for us and how he's won heaven for us, doesn't that empower us to keep pressing on toward the goal despite the fact that we are faced with life's trials and troubles? In Christ, we can be strong. We can fight the good faith and know that we are winners in Christ and winners now and winners forever in Christ. So again, God through Isaiah is saying to us, be strong, do not fear, and remember that our God empowers us. He gives us the strength that we need to live as his believing children and to go onward as Christian soldiers who are winners now and forever in Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, there are so many things happening in our world today that will continue happening in our world that, that could cause us to fear. But we have Jesus. Or again, we have to say, we could better say, Jesus has us. Thank you for living and dying for us, paying for all of our sins, for making us your own, for winning heaven for us. Thank you for saying to us, do not fear. Help us to keep confidently trusting in you and to keep sharing with the world the confidence we have in Jesus. In, in his name we pray, amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.